When was the last time you saw the sun, Exile? It has been some time. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the builds that made me enjoy the latest Path of Exile League, Trial of the Ancestors. I won't mention anything about the League mechanic though, because I don't really like it. Because the builds that I enjoy playing don't fit that type of content. If you do want to know more about the League mechanic though, I highly recommend checking out the video by Blue Footed, which is nearly two hours long and goes into all the details more about the league mechanic in my review in about a month. With this, let's jump into the first build, which was my league starter. Right away, I had some beef with someone on Twitter. And I prefer chicken. <laughs> Jokes aside, I got into a conversation with Lewin, who's a big Path of Exile fan and regularly posts memes about it on Twitter. I recommended him EK Ignite as a league starter and gave him my PUB back from Sanctum League. As the league launch kept creeping closer and closer, I thought, why not try it again and see if the build is still as good as it was in Sanctum. And I must say, it performed damn well. Many months ago, I watched MBX play the build, he zoomed around, shot a bunch of projectiles and, you know, the classic sexy explosions were everywhere. Was this too good to be true or was this a hundred divine build that no mortal being can make in a reasonable amount of time? After checking the build in PUB, removing a bunch of high value items, removing clusters and so on, I realized the build itself was fairly cheap to get going and to still feel good. This might not matter to some, but I'm not that good at Path of Exile and sometimes my ass gets eaten by some weird spider nibbling my butt cheeks. But with EK Ignite being able to shoot around you with the lab enchant on your helmet, this doesn't happen. You are kind of protected from all sides. And on top of that, you even have Chain with Gloomfang making clear easier and with Herald of Ash, monster packs even explode. All this is possible thanks to the Elementalist Ascendancy, which makes every hit ignite. That is how this physical spell skill becomes an ignite build. There's also some wacky conversion going on and a thing like double dipping, but we won't go into that. Now, all that matters is getting the skill gem level and the ignite DPS higher. This is easy at the start with a plus one wand and shield, or an obliteration wand for even juicy explosions. After that, you just keep on zooming and farming. You feel every upgrade with this build and thankfully the ceiling is very high, so you can even kill pinnacle bosses. Another reason for playing this build over any other build was that I played it before and knew it was good enough at Sanctum which was coming back this patch. I'm sure there are much better builds out there which are also way cheaper, but for a League starter and over 30 divines in it, without the Oriot's end, I was loving it. I highly recommend trying the build out if you want a fun, zoomier Ignite build that clears maps well, but don't expect to have an easy time before some serious upgrades against pinnacle bosses and tankier enemies. I tried Herald of Thunder Auto Bomber leaks ago with a crazy investment of maybe five divines. Stop Peppy laughing at me. I regretted my decision in the first hour. <laughs> this build is not a leak starter, nor a low budget friendly build. But it's also not high budget, because at around 20 to 30 divines, I was up and running. Kind of. The build works thanks to the ring's storm secrets. They lower the frequency of how often your Herald of Thunder can hit the enemy. With a low frequency, you strike the enemy with a thunderous clap of your ass cheeks a few times a second, <laughs> dealing a ton of lightning damage. Problem is, you take damage every time Herald of Thunder strikes an enemy, but because that counts as a hit, you can use cast when damage taken in a variety of setups to help you out and make this auto bomber even thicker. 
So crackling lands with Culling Strike helps you with clearing and during your stroll through the map, you also automatically cast Curses on the enemies, helping you to deal more damage. I think in my setup I also used Purifying Flame with Culling Strike and used crackling lands in a more damage oriented setup, but that is the beauty of this build, because now that you consistently take damage with a ton of energy and life leech, you can use that damage taken in some other form to automate things. Super interesting build that gave me a glimpse of what an auto bomber build can and can't do for the future. I highly recommend playing this build maybe as a second build or maybe swapping to it after a Stormbrand leak start because it can do Sanctum fairly easily if you don't get one shot that is. Overall, it was quite nice being able to just run around and kill stuff without having to click a button. Speaking of... You may be wondering... Why? Yeah, that's what I ask myself as well. 50 divines in. So <laughs> This was a very tough build for me to figure out and took a lot of currency to even get going. As mentioned, about 50 divines and way more depending on how far you want to push this build. I won't go too much into the details because I don't think I have fully grasped the build and how or why it works. Why do I say that? Well, I broke my loop after buying a belt and for the people who know, that means after some time, you just die. Overall, the build is amazing when it works. It truly feels like an auto bomber because you are melting rares while walking around. The DPS can reach 30 million and more, and because it's chaos, it feels even stronger. Now, you might be wondering, you had the build. It worked, so why not play it anymore? There are a few issues. First, sound. I love the sound in PoE, but Wardloop was the first build that made me turn the sound nearly all the way down, which is a shame. Second, Legion is my favorite leak mechanic and Wardloop isn't really made for it. I realize this is not really an issue anymore, but at this time during this build, I saw a lot of profit per hour from doing Legion, so I really wanted to do, you know, Legion. Third, and most importantly, the Arch Nemesis modifier on a rare enemy that gives them a frozen dome also looks a little bit similar to Frost Shield. It breaks the loop. So you stand there dealing zero damage, which is very likely going to be your death. If you can't start the loop again, you'll very likely die, or at the least, it feels awkward and is very annoying, especially when it happens multiple times a map. Starting the loop at the start of a map also got a bit annoying, having to manually activate the flasks and then weapon swapping to get the engine going. Other than that, I really enjoyed the build. Dot damage on the ground didn't matter, I was nearly unkillable when I finally had enough life and ward, and the damage kept on increasing. Still, Legion is the big moneymaker for me, and Forbidden Right Ward Loop just doesn't work with it. Or not as well as the next build. Tornado Shot Deadeye is a wet dream when it comes to moving fast, shooting a bunch of projectiles and being able to take advantage of mechanics I enjoy. Legion, strong boxes, shrines are all nice. And now, Headhunter again. If you follow me for some time, back in Sentinel League, I said how I didn't like Headhunter anymore and won't use it because they changed it in a way that I don't like. The Arch Nemesis changes brought a Headhunter change, which was nerfing the speed, but what it gave us was so much defense, you become an unkillable god on top of some extra chunky damage. So with a belt that makes you a god defensively, now we only need to fix the speed issue which can be solved by playing a faster ascendancy, the Deadeye. But I don't want to suck Headhunter off here, because some of you might not be able to get it in dozens of hours, nor did I for thousands of hours of playtime. So how does Tornado Shot Deadeye perform without Headhunter and a moderate budget? In short, incredibly well. First, 
I had some currency left over and jumped into Omni Lightning Arrow. It felt weak, I had to aim, which I wasn't used to anymore after the previous three builds, and enemies started to eat my ass again, which I don't like. Unless it's Friday. <laughs> But with Crouching Tuna's Tornado Shot build guide and some calculated risk, I got rid of my Omniscience, changed a few socket colors, put Tornado Shot in, and I felt the power surging through my veins. God, the memes in this video. The bow was the same as with Lightning Arrow, so I was shocked how much stronger I instantly felt, especially against the basic rare mob. I still had the Lightning Arrow enchant on my helmet, so I knew there's a lot I can do to make this build not only good, but actually amazing for mapping and blasting Legion. Weirdly enough, losing Omni was good because I was able to use tattoos from the current League mechanic. Getting around 180% projectile speed made the build feel even better now that projectiles shoot to the corners of the screen. With a proper Legion Blaster, I was able to make a lot of currency in a short time, only taking around 3 minutes or so per map. Then, after some days, I sold my Ward Loop build, continued farming, and finally got my Headhunter. This may be weird to say, but I might be a Headhunter Enjoyer again, if the build can take advantage of it, which not every build can, which is fine. I still can't do Sanctum well with Tornado Shot, probably because of my lackluster bow and a few other upgrades. But right now I can map for hours and get myself better gear. Maybe even a Mage Blood? If my GPU doesn't catch on fire. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for builds that I should try, let me know down below. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day.